everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The Cody Cast. Today I'm joined by our brilliant visual, oh God, you've got like a really long title, a long <laughs> introduction. Did you write this yourself? No. Brilliant video, visual content creator, video editor and social media coordinator. And I must say, he's got the most amazing voice. Welcome to the show, Tom Stevens. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Lisa. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. I'm going to cue that up first. It's, it's strange for me because I'm normally pressing the button there. Yeah. And then I normally press record on the thing, so it's weird to be on this side. So I've handballed the reins over to AJ, who's our other young cinematographer expert who's taking control of this whole project now. Fantastic. So don't stuff it up, AJ. Yeah, please. Because <laughs> I'll be looking at this footage after and it better be sensational. <laughs> You better make Tom look a million bucks. Um, <laughs> firstly, I'm nervous for today's episode because I sound like a child next to you. Like you have the best voice for radio. I've, I hear that a little bit, but I've never actually, I don't know, maybe I should have ventured into the radio space. I don't know. Seriously, I feel like you missed your calling. Uh, I don't know if that's for me because I've worked in radio, but not on air. Yes. I've, been, I've been on air, but not worked on air. But there's some early early hours to be done. When it comes to radio, I don't know, like I don't mind getting up at 4.30 in the morning sometimes, but not every single morning. Yes, actually tell us a little bit about your background because you were in breakfast radio, which is brutal. Mm. You know what? I always get uh, when people ask about the radio stuff and they always say, what did you do? And I say, I was the video producer and they're always like, oh, video producer in radio, that doesn't make sense. And I'm like, you've heard of the internet, right? <laughs> like you, you know about social media, you've got a Facebook account, you've seen videos on there, you know? So... I did make videos in radio. I started as a digital content producer um, back in Adelaide. I was at Nova um, and I worked, you know, Dylan Lewis, who, who hosted Recovery on the yes. ABC years ago. I worked with Dylan. He was really cool. And then I uh, was in Sydney with Fitzy and Whipper and we would have um, all the, the international celebs who would come through to all the radio shows for their quick interviews and I'd shoot all them. And then um, came to Melbourne and I was with Husey and Kate and then um, at Gold recently before that. So basically a slew of radio shows around around the country and I'd make all their video content for them and all their, all their social media. But now I work at Cody. So, which is great because now I don't rise at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> True. Yeah. Unless I have to get you up to come and do a really early interview with... Somebody. Well, that's all right because then, because then I've got the experience to do it because I've done it many times before. Yeah, I must <laughs> say you look very fresh faced when I get into the office. I'm like, I'm half asleep. Nick's definitely asleep, and you're like, Hi guys, I've just been here for the past hour setting everything up, and I'm like, pretty much. Well, dead. I don't think I look fresh faced because I think because of all those years of getting up early, I've got these like permanent bags <laughs> under my eyes, like they're kind of like tattoos under my eyes. I feel like I should get them tattooed, like bleached kind of thing, to fix them up because they don't go away even after a full night's sleep. And I also don't think that um, Nick has just woken up because I reckon he also must get up a little bit early to put on, you know, to get, get himself ready because I reckon Nick's a very, like, wants to look really schmick kind of guy. So he reckons he's, he says he's just woken up, but I think he's probably been up for a little while prepping as well. Did you see that video of him? He was definitely asleep, but I do oh, yeah, agree. Okay. He's very vain. <laughs> So <laughs> yeah. he probably has a glam squad. Yeah, like that's full, right. Full hair and makeup, oh, just makeup, no hair. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Um, so I have to just quickly ask you, do you have an interesting celebrity story? I'm absolutely throwing you on the bus here, but you must have met some really... I, I was talking about this people. recently already with, um, with Brenton. Um, one of our clients, Brenton from Avenue, we were talking about... Uh, this, the same topic came up with the radio stuff and he was like, who was, who was the biggest dickhead? <laughs> and... Um, and there isn't really many stories like that. Um, they're all quite, they're all quite lovely. Maybe they're just in the mode of like they do so many interviews a yeah. day that when you meet them, you meet so many of these people, but only for fifteen minutes at a time. Um, but an interesting one was Sai, who did uh, Gangnam Style. Do you remember that oh pop star from my Korea? Oh yes. He was one of the ones who came to the to the radio station, and his special rule that had to be communicated in advance to everyone in the office was. You enter and he, he walks straight from the studio and no one's allowed to, everyone needs to be in their desk at that time that he's going to enter and leave. So no one can make eye contact with him. No one can go and speak to him. He needs to clean, a clean entrance and escape to before and after the interview. Oh my God. So that was a very special request from Sai. But most of them are, most of them are lovely. Oh, that just seems a little bit over the top. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like even an Oscar winner wouldn't even want that. Yeah, I know. I mean, that would just—I feel like that would be more awkward doing that than than just accepting the fact that people are going to be like, "Oh, can I have a photo? Yeah, can I have a photo and whatnot." Exactly. Yeah. So awkward. Mm. 
actually some I, I don't actually want to say her name because I don't want to get her in trouble, but she was saying that she worked at a TV show in the States mm-hmm. and she said the main actor wouldn't let anyone eat on set. No. Because if he smelt food, he'd get out of character. What? And yeah, and this is like on a... I don't want to say it's like a Z grade TV show. Look, it's yeah, not okay. like it, you know, it's not like an Oscar winning, Emmy award winning TV show or anything. And I just thought, yeah. are you joking? It's not right like Jim now? Carrey famously staying in character throughout, <laughs> or it's not like Christian Bale going wild on set as like someone not not with not as much profile. Okay, no, yeah. So I was shocked to be honest with you. So that's um, yeah. I can imagine there's some weird requests by celebs. Well, I kind of get distracted when people are eating if it's loud. I don't that's know. true. I've got a real a real problem with people eating with their mouth open. And if yeah. I was an actor, I'd probably. And if I was allowed to tell people to not do it, maybe I would. Yeah, that's true. Who knows? Could be a bit of a diva. Mm. Mm. Well, let's see. Uh, hopefully, on today's show, I should have bought some food and started chewing really loudly. <laughs> <laughs> Into the microphone. Yeah, that's the worst. Oh, please don't. <laughs> all over the microphone. Yeah. Disgusting. <laughs> um, well, on today's topic, we are talking all things video. Mm-hmm. So video is obviously super important in the world of social yeah. and I've seen some amazing video content online, mm-hmm. but I've also seen some horrendous video content. Yes. There've been some, yeah, really big files online. Mm-hmm. So you've obviously, you're very well versed in the area of uh, video and, and for me, I think that more brands should be using video content because it does actually stop the scroll. Yes. So yes. Well, when was the last time you went on social media and you weren't looking at video? I mean, like you see a few images... Mm-hmm. Um, and, a, and a few text posts and they can be kind of engaging, but video is probably the majority of what you see now, right? That's true. And especially I feel mm. during ISO, more and more people were looking for video content because mm-hmm. they wanted to connect with humans because they were just stuck at home with the dog. Yes. So. Yeah, but then that also raises the question, should people be looking to create more video during isolation when production quality is lower? I don't know. I mean, it's mm-hmm. an ongoing debate because we constantly look at video and what, what trends and what does well and what doesn't because... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it is it is about what what the what the subject matter is, and if you're talking about LinkedIn, then it is about the message that people are saying and how well they communicate that. So it doesn't have to be the highest production value, but then high production value stuff does do look really nice as well, and it's really rewarding to watch. It's like film. Yes, people still watch Neighbors, but they also want to see the latest blockbuster. That's true. That's true. Can I actually say just on the topic of film, uh, I n- noticed on my new phone that you can my iPhone you can shoot in 4K. Mm-hmm. Which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Like people are just shooting. Like the phones are pretty much like almost video cameras. These Some days. of the um, the new Samsungs, I think, shoot in eight K. That's insane. Which is which is wild. Like it's it's very well, it's very unnecessary. I mean, you need an expensive computer to even work with that. Yeah. Um, but I've seen a I've seen a couple of live music videos that were one shot in eight K. Um, shot from the back of the crowd and then because of the resolution they crop in and create all these different shots out of the one shot Mm. which is amazing um so the fact that they pack that into a a cellular phone is is unbelievable yeah everyone's got access to fantastic quality on their on their phone now if they want to film something i know which is crazy i know that you're a you're actually a true creative i would say like i see you active on on so many different mediums in fact you're a gaming influencer in your past life not anymore yeah a bit, <laughs> bit of a past life but I did take um I did take a, a couple years off my work to pursue a few years of full-time being digital digital talent <laughs> I guess you could say um is that what they call influencers these days I don't know if I like it I'm gonna use that when you say influencer and like the kind of influencers we work with at Cody you more you more think of Instagram yeah. or whatever I, I was producing content on Twitch which is like a live um, live streaming platform, kind of like YouTube, but all live. But the fo- the focus is gaming, and what I and I enjoyed that because um, I did it as a hobby in the year before that, and it built up to the point where I was like, I'm I'm going to pursue it. But um, and I do it occasionally still, but not full time. But the reason I like Twitch um, as a platform is not so much the gaming because I used to like games, not so much anymore. But it's more so the platform itself. So I would go and play. Um, and live stream it for the sake of the broadcast and sort of the, the entertainment and the and the conversation responding to people in a, in a live in a live way because I think that live is um, the biggest the most important trend like really? sort of moving forward in video and when I say live I, I like this is just my opinion I don't have any data on hand to back this up but I think there's Instagram live and yeah. and whatnot and a lot of people are doing live streams in that regard but I'm talking about like an actual live production. Like 
you know, multi-camera, different sets, different designs and like prepared content um, because you can do anything when it comes to live from, from someone's home computer they can have different guests organized. They can have different graphics. Like it's just, there's so much can be done from a home studio that I think the future, a future in, in video is, is live content because I'm waiting for someone to do something as high quality as like Letterman mm. from their office. Cause I think that can be done. Well, interestingly, a lot of people have been doing pretty much like all the talk show hosts have been doing stuff from their home. Mm-hmm. So I see a lot of the big celebrities and they're just hosting shows mm-hmm. literally from their couch or in their office. So, yeah. yeah, I think COVID's probably accelerated that ability. And I look at the home studio setups that people have now. I think, yeah. whoa, like you've got a full setup because they're, they're doing podcasts from home yes. or they're doing interviews from home. So you need to have that full yep. whole thing whole setup all done i know and then they can make and then there's no excuse to make content from there exactly yeah exactly right so mm-hmm. yeah live okay so that's an interesting trend to talk about yeah so there are risks in live though as well, well in terms of like the longe- <laughs> longevity of your content i mean like yeah. does that content translate well into youtube to be watched in hindsight as mm. well i don't know it depends what it is because you if when you're live you're, you're only live And then that content, if it gets archived, does it have value once Mm. it's archived? It depends. I feel like I'm proposing more questions than I have answers for (laughs) you today. (laughs) I'm like, are you asking me these questions? Yeah, it's just thought starters (laughs) though, isn't it? There's there's no rules on the internet. Well, the interesting thing about live is like it's obviously not edited. So mm. there's, a, there's a lot of filler stuff in there because right. it's like there are things that go wrong. The conversation might not be as tight as it could be if it was edited. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a different style of content. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done a few LinkedIn lives and they've pretty much only been good when I could see the comments because for a long time, LinkedIn, yes. if you're listening LinkedIn, can you stop making live so hard? You need a third-party software mm-hmm. to do live and they finally just integrated comments. So before I'd have to have my camera set up and then my phone set up so I could see yes. the comments coming through and then there's yes. also a delay as well. So yeah. it's just always a little bit harder. But um, I, I think the the good thing about live is if you can make it interactive, yes. then that's good because yes. then obviously a normal video isn't. So this is This is the future, right? Because... What, and, and this is why I enjoyed Twitch as a platform so much. And you'll start to see this on LinkedIn now and, and everywhere else. But it's no longer enough with people's attention spans to watch a video. I mean, yeah. it, it, is, it is if it's nice. But we're moving towards, I watch a video. I watch a new video every day. So it's current. Then I watch a live video. But now I want to be able to reach my hand into the TV mm. and interact with the person who's in it which is mind blowing when you think about it. Mm. And so that's where, where that's at, to be able to be making content live on the fly, people watching and commenting on it and the person in the TV or in the computer responding back to that person. That's, that's, that's not even the future, that's now. Yeah. And uh, I think um, it's time consuming, so not many people are, are pursuing it because when you're live, you've got to put in the time, but brands should be considering it, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So I think that's like, you're right. That's definitely a trend to watch. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'll be, I think I should probably do some more lives. So maybe I'll rope you in and we can. I don't know if you've got the time (laughs) with with this agency and this podcast and, you know, everything else you're doing. I don't know if you've got time for. (laughs) That's a bloody good point. I wish I could outsource myself um yeah, yeah. <laughs> just get someone to help me you need a doppelganger i know I need to like do all your live streams ten, and clubhouse rooms oh they cl- yeah and then we're gonna Jesus get into that right. you need yeah. time for that yeah so when are you gonna do your linkedin live streams and when are you gonna do clubhouse maybe i'll do linkedin live when i'm on clubhouse oh yes combine okay yeah i'll be like half looking at the linkedin screen looking for comments and then on clubhouse going oh my god i can't do all yeah. this this is all like way too hard for me now well that's the future of what brands should ideally be doing now right like when if someone comes to us and they say can you make this video for my linkedin then we, yes. we say why do, why don't you also want to produce and reformat this same content for instagram and tiktok and everywhere else yeah it's all about being smart and taking that content and putting it through different pillars instead of being overwhelmed with trying to make content for all everywhere else it's actually a great point and i think a lot of people i know a lot of people do podcasts and mm-hmm. they'll be doing it via zoom and they don't use the video i'm like what are you doing like that's yeah right yeah it's really bizarre to me so i've been yeah. talking to a few people lately who are doing podcasts i'm like why don't you cut the video and and use that as you know an additional form of content yes because like you said it's time consuming creating content so mm-hmm. if you're going to dedicate half an hour to do an interview you should stretch that into like 20 pieces of content absolutely I mean, well you're making the content anyway yes like you're, you're sitting there to, like it may as well be like why would you want to ignore the visual platforms youtube being like the biggest social media network exactly. of all time and yeah. then why don't you want to distribute on instagram you know, right up there as well. Exactly, exactly mm. right. So actually talking about trends, like do you think that YouTube is 
still going to be relevant in a couple of years? Yeah. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's, there's a lot of discussion around YouTube and people don't rate some of their practices. Um, the, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about advertising on YouTube and um, they called it the adpocalypse. I think it was a couple of years ago when there was a huge trend of advertisers pulling revenue um, from, uh, from creators who we were swearing and whatnot in their, in their content, mm. even if it was only really mild. And then they started to do that um, digitally without actual manual review. So a lot of people complaining, like, my video has been demonetized for no reason. Mm. Um, I, I might be butchering it, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's kind of how it went. So there's a lot of discussion about that and it, it kind of feels like a bit of a bubble situation where you, YouTube's getting too big. But we've been saying that about Facebook for a while and Facebook's mm. still massive. Mm. Um, like, I've, I've been thinking for a while, I'm like, no one uses Facebook anymore. Mm. But re- they do, um, even if I don't want them to, because <laughs> even if it's boring because it's old and uncool. Um, they still do. And I think YouTube will still be the big dog for a while. Um, th- I mean, they're in the live streaming space now as well. You can go That's live true. on YouTube and they, they, and when it does come to gaming, actually, they're taking on, they're taking on Twitch, um, in an area where Microsoft failed. Um, I think they will be the big dog for a while. I mean, it's Google. Yeah. Mm. And, and actually the interesting thing about YouTube is that you can search on it. Because you can't yeah. search as easily. So if you want to find a video on how mm. to fold a jumper, you can mm. just go onto YouTube and find that really easily. Yes. Whereas like you can't search that on Instagram. Well, if you're looking up a recipe, I'm going to YouTube before Google. Because yes. if I'm on Google, I only want the video anyway. Exactly. Because I don't want to read. I don't want to read the recipe and interpret it. I want to see it done. Oh, really? So you're one of those guys. Yeah, well, I want to see the recipe done. Yeah. Oh, the other cool. the other night, I actually looked up a YouTube video for the Danish national disc, which I was telling these guys that I was going to cook the other night. It turned out really well, by the way. Oh, um, secret and talent. Yeah, but I'm not going to uh, – rather than read that, I want to see the professional, Dan- genuine Danish guy make the, make the dish. Okay, well, you're going to need to bring some in now. Oh, it's not very healthy, though. <laughs> We're all trying <laughs> to fine. be healthy around here. <laughs> yeah. Trying, trying being the operative mm-hmm. word. Um, I must say, I'm a bit of a shortcut chef, so I just read it and then interpret it and mm-hmm. read that as a guide. Yes. And then I just make my own decisions when yeah, it comes exactly. to cooking. Well, you've got to have a bit of personal creativity. <laughs> That's what you know, I reckon. Make it your own. Yeah. You don't want to be a copycat of someone else's content or, in this case, cooking. Exactly, mm. exactly. Well, actually, on the topic of video content, how do you um, suggest like people find their own style? Because I think a lot of us look online and we see mm. someone's content and go, oh my God, that content looks amazing. I'm going to just pretty much duplicate that. Yeah. Um, you've really just got to press record and, and start going because you can only do, if you were trying to imitate someone else's content or at least be overly influenced by them, you can only do that for so long until that would become tedious because if you're putting on an act, that's kind of exhausting. But if you're being yourself, it's not exhausting. So if you just start making content, um, whether it be filming yourself for LinkedIn or if you're trying to start a YouTube channel or something like that, if you just get going with it, eventually all that kind of thing will iron itself out and you'll end up doing what you want to anyway. I mean, some people might have a higher threshold than others and they might keep going copying someone else for a long, long time. But that's, I'm not encouraging that. Um, they're deliberately trying to do it. But, but it's, yeah, being yourself is, is easy. And, um, and I think that will prevail if you just get going and start, and start doing whatever it is you want to do when it comes to making videos anyway. 